G'day, g'day. Hope you guys are having a good one. And today I wanted to show you Mandelbulb 3D. Also, sorry for not having any streams or videos out for a while. I just, I've caught COVID and so I've been a bit out of it. I'm fine. You can maybe tell by my voice isn't great. Uh, my camera is out for some reason. It just hasn't been detected by my computer. So no camera for today. Uh, but yeah. Here's some of the past creations I've made. I made these almost all to, uh, yesterday. Uh, this one I made on Sunday, but this one, this one, this one, and that one I made all on Monday, so yesterday. And yeah, it's I think it's they're pretty cool. And so I just wanted to show you how to be able to create these sorts of things. Now, I've done some mandel bulbs in other programs such as Houdini. I've looked into Mandelbulbs in Blender and whatnot. Yeah, and I'm work I'm currently making a Mandelbulb in Houdini right now for a summative, or I should say that I'm pretty much finished making one. I just need to render it out and everything. If you just go to Mandelbulb 3D. But yeah, moving into Mandelbulb 3D, uh, you can download it here. So I just downloaded the latest version. It hasn't been updated for a while but it works fine so that's good once you've downloaded it it will open up and look like this it's going to be a bit confusing but we can hopefully teach you how to get stuff going starting off we'll probably just move the scale up a little bit so you can make it as large as you'd like i'll make it for example now 720 by 960 and if we just click calculate 3d that will calculate it i might actually bump this up one more There we go. So that's nice and big. Uh, we can see a lot of stuff. Now, from the get-go, this is pretty cool. And you can do a lot with this already. But let's go see if we can make something similar to, to this one uh, that I made here. Now, starting off, you have something on the side that says formulas. And here's where you can add your Mandelbulb formula. So this just has a bunch of preset formulas that you can combine and just add and utilize. So I'll show you how to get at least one formula going. And when you decide to use this program, you can further implement multiple formulas at once. All of the ones that I've made have just been singular formula, but I have messed around with multiple formulas. I'm can't remember if this one was multiple or not. I did a bit of messing around with them. I just wanted to keep it pretty simple. So starting off from the get-go, we want to use... From the get-go, you want to use Amazing Box SSE2, which is in the 3DA tab of Formula 1. You can use multiple formulas, but stick with Formula 1 because that's just your base formula. Once you have that, you can just press Calculate 3D. And boom! You've got a nice yellow creamy display. That is normal. Once we go into, if you click Navigator, once you're in here, you can navigate and change parameters of your Mandelbulb. So you won't start off with all these sorts of stuff, but um, if you just click down here, you'll see two arrows. You've got an arrow over here for changing far plane and stuff like that. Same as like camera controls with some other programs and over here we've now brought up our parameters uh, which i think you can bring up over here yeah now for using amazing box sse2 you want to utilize a scale min r and fold so moving the scale is pretty straightforward that changes your scale so you want to move this until you can start seeing some Patterns appear. And once you've got something that has popped up, you can use min R and this will change stuff. It's a bit finicky, but uh, just find something that, that interests you. And you can mix that with uh, your fold as well. You can start creating some cool shapes. There we go. That's similar to what I actually had last time. So I may change it up slightly. Yeah. 
There we go. This looks pretty cool. Just moving around these. You can ch uh, use the same parameters as what I have if you wish, but this is just currently what I'm going to be running for now. I should mention before I forget, you do have a navigator size over here. So doing this will change. I think it starts off with like about a hundred, um, which is quite small, but changing it to something larger, it gives you a bit more to work with. Now, if you click, uh, left click into the display here, you can now navigate around. Now the program works pretty damn fast, which is awesome coming from other programs such as Maya, which is slow when trying to render these sorts of things. So you can just move your mouse as if you're, which pans the camera per se. So if you want to pan with your mouse, you can. Now you can use WASD, D moves back of where the camera is, W obviously moves forward, D and A move, you know, side to side. And you've got Q and E as well, which do similar things. You've also got a U and an I for tilting, but that's pretty, I'm not, I haven't fully understood it, I must admit, but from what I have gathered so far that those seem to be doing the job. Now I'm just going to line it up to something that interests me the most. Now I might stick with this. I quite like this. I think it looks good. Once you've found something that you like, you can press view to main. View to main will send it out to your main. Now, nothing will update as of yet, but if we click calculate 3D, bing bang boom, it'll start rendering it out. There we go. Now, if we click into lighting over here, it'll bring up your little lighting tab. And here, there is so much that you can do, and you'll spend probably half your time messing around in here. Now, I may quickly, for the time being, just rip downscale it a little bit, just so it runs a little bit faster for me. Uh, that should be fine. Now, from the get go, you've got object. And object, you've got your speculant here. This is the colors that we're going to be working with. You do have an outside and an inside, which you can both use. But I mainly just use the outside because it's the only one that really needs using. Now, from the get-go, you've got a top bar and you've got a bottom bar. Now, the top bar is for glint and stuff like that. So if you want to have a bit of a glint, you can. I usually leave them at like a black or just a darker version of a color. A lighter glint can be nice, but personally, I prefer the darker glints. So from the get-go, I might try to make something like a deep blue. So I'll start here. Now, judging by the aren't being any tan colors here, I don't think I've hit any tan colors, which I can change with this moving the specular thing, but I will add this regardless. I may make another one here. Of a similar color, maybe a bit lighter. Here we go. Now we're getting some stuff. I might make a deep navy there. It won't change too much. Maybe maybe might make it a nice color there. I might make a nice light blue to counter it here as well. Now, once you'll notice, you'll see a bunch of stuff to the side. Now, believe me, it's slightly annoying having a bunch of this to the side, but if you drag it out, press C, and then press B as you hover over it, you can pop those on top, and bam. Now, you could obviously move this around to find the color scheme that you're looking for. So, I'll do just that. I quite like this, it looks quite nice. Once we've done with that, I'm going to leave my diffuse as is because it copies 
your specular but we let's just first move some of these sliders now this will bring up some highlights of your specular so i personally want to keep it quite low diffuse will change how much diffuse is going in same as most other programs Once you've found something that you like, you can mess around with the gamma if you wish. Gamma can change, well, the gamma. As you'd expect. And we've got light Y angle and light X angle. Here you can mess around with how the lighting affects your mandelbulb. Just like that. I quite like that. You've also got over here your intensity. So bumping that up bumps up the intensity of the light. I'm going to leave it to around where it was prior. Once we've done that and got what we like, you can move to the ambient tab. Now the ambient tab won't change too much for the way that I've set up mine, but going back to some of my other renders, if you have a lot of background su such as like this, or this one here, or even this one, that's this is all your ambient light. This will be all like your background light now you can add background pictures to this thing which i haven't done yet and i haven't really felt the want to do that uh but maybe potentially something similar to this i could have had stars in the background or something like that but i just want to keep it pretty basic in that department so i'll see if this will affect much it'll affect the lighting a little bit and change the depth i don't think I really want to mess around with this for this specific image but depending on if your one's a little bit different to mine you may want to do that now here we've got diffuse shadows I haven't yeah there's only if you've got hard shadows so currently we're using um we're using ambient shadows not hard shadows so that won't really do anything but here you got your ambient shadows so you can make your ambient shadows a little bit lighter or dark if you wish change your reflections i might bump them down a little bit You've got roughness if you want it to be really rough or if you want it to be have no roughness you can change that once you have found something that you like also i should probably mention if you click these you can change the color of your ambient and your depth that's if you need to or want to you don't need to do that if you like it as is now once you're done with ambient you can go to defog now defog being dynamic fog you can change the volumetric fog of your render now if you like lots of fog you can move it to something there that's pretty mystical or you can move it all the way down i think having a bit of fog just further increases the the overall oomph of the render itself makes it look larger and just have a bit more depth so personally i like having at least a little bit of fog if not have quite a decent bit of fog but that is entirely up to you so you've got the amount over here you've got the offset which is your next slider which doesn't seem i think my fog's a little bit too low so if i just bump that up a little bit all right then i can show you here So that's how that would be working but i don't want that much fog and you've got the far offset which once again if i bump it back up again will change how far it is offsetted so for something like this one you'd want to i had it quite far away because i didn't want it affecting some of this closer stuff um but yeah moving back to it got this you've got blend fog which changes it slightly it just uh, blends it a little bit together uh, otherwise i'm quite liking this as it is you do have positional lighting if you want to use that or light maps if you have a light map or want to make a light map but i usually stick with uh the global light it does seem to have changed seem to have changed my lighting a little bit so i just bump that back down Um, so it seems to reset my lighting so I'll just quickly 
find something that I like again. There we go, I quite like that. Now, once you've done and found something that you like, you can now press mid, high, or video rendering. Now, I'm not going to explain video rendering. I actually haven't messed around with video rendering yet, but if it interests you, you're welcome to learn it. I usually just mess around with high, but that's up to you. Now, if I bump up the scale and set it to high, and I'll quickly render it out, and then we can see how it looks. There we go. Now that it's all rendered, it looks pretty snazzy. I quite like it. Now, if you do run into problems such as over here, uh, where's a good example? You may be able to see over here, if we zoom in a little bit, sometimes you get some little dots, some black dots that happen, and that's just a, maybe a bit of an issue. Maybe you don't like that. So if you do run into black dots, you can go into calculation and uh, move your ray step multiplier down, which will just, it'll increase the render time, but it's worth it. Honestly, if you want to get rid of the black dots, I did just did a couple things. I think that ship one that I showed just before, uh, this one here was at about a 0 0.1, but the majority of these have been fine with a 0. 0.25 which is the default for high uh, render now I think this is pretty good now I should probably mention to save there is a m3i if you click this over here and you can just find something I just have it set to my default folder uh, and I'm just gonna save it over here I'm just gonna name it blue boxes now I've got a couple ones here and bing bam boom saved now you do have the this one here just for the parameters but i like saving the whole thing just in case there's something else i think this also saves with all the lighting and everything as well so pretty cool i like it now you've got save peg you've got png jpg uh, jpeg i should say and zbuff now i usually save it as a png uh, make sure you do png uh, parameter over here that seems to get it to render better i think in my opinion now if you go let's go png and i just shove into this folder here make sure it's an 8 bit i'm yet to get the 16 bit working which is weird and i've done a bit of research into it couldn't find out how to do it if anyone does know please let me know in the comments but we'll stick with 8 bit for the time being and we just save it once it's saved you can just check it out in your render folder it won't take too long and bam we've got a nice cool render High quality, looks good, doesn't take too much time, and it's pretty simple. I quite like it. The program just runs awesomely. The renders, I'm yet to have a render take more than really 10 minutes. I think the one that's taken me the longest once again was that ship one, but the majority of these have only taken about one minute to render, which is super duper fast. Now, in all fairness, it's never been overly crazy numbers, but it's still pretty high, so pretty crazy compared to some other programs and this does run just on your cpu as well to get the maximum quality of renders due to how the program works out its formulas so pretty good pretty fast hopefully one day they work out how to get gpus working to gpu accelerate some of these renders but otherwise yeah i hope you like it i hope this was informational and hopefully you guys end up making some mandel bobs as well have a good one and maybe catch you next time See you.